Good morning. My name is Prophetess Angela Richardson um, from Grace Ministries, Walking in Freedom. And today I'm going to teach about a subject that God has put on my heart. Um, that um, the word of God is saying that God is with us. God wants us, his people to know that he's with them and that we don't have to worry about nothing because God is with us. You know, a lot of times things may happen in our lives and we may feel like we're alone. But after this teaching today, you will see that you are never alone. God is always with us. So I'm going to bow my head for a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, I come to the throne of mercy and grace. Lord, I pray that everyone comes on this live or everybody comes on the replay, that they will uh, get the meaning of the, the, the word that's going, coming forth right now in the name of Jesus. And they will get it down in their heart and their minds, Lord, and they will know that they're never alone, that you said in your word that you will never leave us, never forsake us, that you will be with us to the end of the world. And Lord, we give you glory, mm -hmm. give you honor, give you praise. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And I'm going to invite maybe a few people just to see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start getting into the lesson. Um, I'm going to start in Matthew. I was reading in Matthew the other day. And, um, and I came across um, in Matthew 1 and verse 23. With it, um, with talks about Mary and the Holy Ghost had um, lighted on Mary and gave her a, a child. And it's, I'm going to read it. It said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God is with us. And so a lot of time when we are reading our scriptures, and we'll it time it, a lot of time we read it and it goes over our head and we don't we really don't it really don't click at that time or maybe the the light bulb don't come on at that time. But anyway, when I was reading this scripture, when I read it, it said God is with us, even though um, before he was you know he was born, his name was gonna mean Emmanuel. God is with us, so we know that God is with us. We don't have anything to worry about. So I'm gonna get over over here in the lesson. It said. The God of creation lives within us in a very personal, intimate way. He comforts, up and comforts us in all the challenging times that we may go through. He teaches us his way. So when we uh, give our life to Christ and uh, become, become sold out to him, and then the Holy Ghost begin to live in us and live in our spirit, now we have a something that would help us. We have an, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit that lives within us that he's going to help us on our Christian journey. So, you know, mm -hmm. and that's a, a Holy Spirit is, is, uh, is God, you know, it, it just as he just as the Holy Spirit, just as much as God is Jesus is. So we have that in, you know, that empowerment living on the inside of us. So we're never alone. I mean, I know, I know I go through it sometimes so that I feel like alone, but most of the time it's just the enemy that's talking to me in my ear, trying to get me to doubt God's word or uh, doubt who God is or who, who had, uh, I doubt what God has told me. So we have to, you know, be very careful, you know, about the voices we listen to. A lot of time it's those voices that's telling us that God don't love us and that God doesn't care for us. That's not God because God, whatever God is telling us, we can always look in his word and we find it. So if that voice is telling us that we're alone, that nobody loves us and God is not with us, then we know that's the enemy that is not, not of God. So we have the power within us to cast that voice down, cast that whatever he's saying down because you know, the enemy is the father of lies. He will tell you anything to try to get you to believe it so you can walk away from God. But after this lesson today, you're going to know that God is with you and you don't walk away from him. You stay with him and, and you allow God to do the things in you that he wants to do in you because it's so very important. It said, um, having a God with us living on the inside of us is a great privilege because we know that we are never alone. We are never alone. Never alone. I'm hearing that song. Um, um, never alone. He promised never to leave me. No, never to leave me alone. And that's what he means. He will not leave you alone. So God is with us in the good times and in the bad times, in the laughing times and in the sorrow time. God is with us. You know, 
even, you know, when we're having a good time, God is with us. And even when we're not having a, such a good time, maybe things are not going right in our lives or maybe, you know, some of our families is acting up our marriages, our children, God is still with us. So we can always go to God with whatever issues that we have in our life. You know, that's why we, we, we pray, you know, when we pray is not just, um, a monologue, but it's a dialogue because when we talk to God, then we listen and be quiet. And, and then God will talk to us. But many times what we do is we'll pray, we get on up and think that's the end of the conversation, but no, that's not the end of the conversation because God has things he wants to tell us. And, and not only in prayer, but in worship, you know, I was worshiping, um, yes, just yesterday and I was doing some things, you know, mm -hmm. making some things, some crafts and up. And I was thinking, I said, Lord, how am I going to do this? And I began to sing a song and I began to sing, uh, the song that Benny Hinn sings all the time. Uh, hallelujah. And I began to sing that song. I began to worship it. And I heard him say, do this, do that add that and i was like okay okay god but so because you know we have uh different ways we can get in contact with god you know we can pray uh we can worship to get in contact with god uh we can um uh fast you know we can get in his word to get in contact with god so you know we just have to use the avenues that god has provided for us and it said even in our laughing times when we're doing good or even our sorrowful times maybe we have lost a loved one and we don't know how we're going to make it or you know maybe you lost your mom your dad or some of your other siblings or your aunts your uncles and you don't know how you're going to maybe make it especially now what's going on with the COVID-19 how a lot of people have lost their family members sometimes um, even that, uh, that COVID-19 has went through a lot of the family members at one time they have may lost more than one loved one at one time but I'm here to let you know that God loves you um, the reason, the way I was able to deal with my death of my mom and my aunt right behind each other, the day apart from each other, was to go in God's word. I went in Matthew 14 and chapter 14, and I began to read um, when he started to say, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, because in my father's house are many mansions. You know, and so I began to read that, you know, I, that was like medicine to me because uh, I read it. You know, when they after they passed and I had to come to the realization that they was really gone and that was like a part of my heart was gone. And so I began to read that scripture and I read it and read it and read it. I mean, I read it for years, you know, and sometimes when I may be even feeling that way, sometimes I go back and I read it again and then it strengthens me, you know, and it helps me continue to go on because we have the word of God that we can use in those times to help us. So, you know, to strengthen us so we can, he can move forward. And God has said, he is forever by our side. God is forever by our side. He, he is not going to leave us no time, no way. We may leave him, but he certainly would not leave us. So the enemy Satan tries and sometimes succeeds in telling us that we are, we are alone, but we are, that, and then that we are by ourselves. But this word today says something different. We are never alone. I don't care what you may be going to through. We are never alone. We are never alone. Say so we have the Holy Ghost living inside of us. We are never alone. Say so God is in, intimately involved in the, in the governance of his mm -hmm. creations. God is intimately, in, in, intimately involved with us. When we have an intimate relationship with him, when we have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him, he's intimately involved with us. He's concerned about us. Whatever that's going on in your life, don't keep it to yourself and say, well, oh, God knows. Yeah, he knows, but he wants to have that relationship with you. He wants you to be able to talk to him and tell him what's going on with you. You know, a lot of times, <clears throat> excuse me. Things have happened in our lives. Sometimes we're angry at God. You know, if, if you're angry at God, go to God and tell him, God, I'm upset about what, what happened it, when it didn't happen like this or that. I'm upset by it. Lord, I need you to help, help with this. And he will help you with that. So have you ever felt alone and God put someone in your heart to call and talk to? And the next thing you know, you're being encouraged. Now you, next time you know, you're calling them for um, maybe to encourage them. And the next thing you know, they are encouraging you. So that, that lets you know that you are not alone, that God cares about whatever that you're going through. He said, um, the next thing you know, you're getting or giving the encouragement you need to keep moving and you feel 
uh, revived after the conversation. Said this is proof that God is with us because He has not He has met our need. So He know what we needed at that time. So He met our need. We needed a voice, a word of encouragement. So He met our need. So He is He's letting us know that He's with us. God is concerned about every aspect of our lives. I don't care what it is, the smallest little thing. You say, oh, God ain't concerned about that. Yes, he is. God is concerned about everything that goes on in your life, no matter how small it is, no matter how large it is, no matter what he, anything that you have on your heart, God is concerned about that. And he wants that to help you uh, deal with whatever you're going with. Uh, going through, or, or better yet, he wants you to help you to, to make you uh, strengthen you and help you go through whatever you're going through. And uh, you, if you're praying for a child to get saved, he he's, he's he hears you. You know, he hears you, and he and he uh, will draw that child to him in his own timing. And, and next thing you know, you'll be getting a call to say, "Mama or Daddy, I'm saved. I gave my life to Christ today." And you know that is what you have been praying for. So God is very concerned about us. He said He is always working in our lives. He's leading us and He's guiding us. He said he's pruning and he's building. He's, he's pruning us, some things in us that's not like him. He's pruning us to get that stuff out of us. He's doing that too. He's guiding us. He, uh, um, and we, uh, we always, I always said, I posted on Facebook yesterday, Lord, order my steps. So everything that I do will honor you. And he, and you, when you, when you, um, say that out of your mouth and you, and when you said, speak the word of God, faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. So when you speak that out of your mouth and he, God hears you, guess what? He orders your steps and he will not send you in nowhere that you may be in danger. You know, maybe you're going, um, uh, somewhere one day, maybe you're driving home from work one day and the Lord say, don't go this way, go the other way. And you listen to what he's saying and you go the other way. And next thing you know, when you get back that, that, that way the next day, you, you go on back that way the next day. And then somebody say, Hey, did you hear about that bad accident that was on that road? And both of the, the cars, the people that was in the cars in that accident, they got killed. So, you know, a lot of time God is protecting us. So when he's telling us something and we're hearing it, uh, do not override what he's telling you to do. Go ahead and do it because if it's lining up with his word, he's trying to warn us. He's trying to protect us. Um, God is directing us. He tell us which way we need to go. You know, if we need to go there, we need to connect with that person or we do not connect with that person. He's going to tell us. He's going to lead us and guide us in all truth because the Holy Spirit is living on in us, living inside of us. And he, the Holy Spirit... Mm -hmm is uh is is gonna go along with what the word of god says is and he's he's um he's right and he's true if you are listening to the holy spirit you can't go wrong mm -hmm. if you're listening to him it's according to his love and divine purpose for our lives so god is gonna work things out for us according to his love and divine, divine purpose for our lives you know a lot of time we see other people moving in, in their in their gifting and everything, and we're just babes in Christ, and we see Lord, uh, when I'm gonna get there, you know. But it's it's, it's a process. We just have to go through the process. God is taking some things out of us, and then God is putting some things in us that will be beneficial for that, the ministry that we're gonna have. So we can run, we can do an effective ministry because we don't want to be just doing ministry to just be doing something. You know, we don't want to be spinning our wheels and nobody get saved. We don't want to be spinning our wheels. Nobody get delivered. And we're gonna. We don't want to be spinning our wheels and nobody get healed. So God had to do things in us so we can be more effective, you know. And then when we go out there to, and uh, tell our testimonies or tell somebody of the goodness of the Lord or, to get, or you know, and ask, somebody may want to go um, uh, give their life to Christ. And you, God allows you to lead that person to Christ, you know, and just let them know that get in a Bible-believing church. I mean, you can come to my church, but if, if that's not where you want to go, there are other churches you can go in that's um, that's preaching the word of God, those five-fold ministries that's going to teach uh, and equip the uh, the saints for the ministry of, 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 of Christ Jesus. So, you know, there's, you know, but God wants to use us as his spokesperson. We are his mouthpieces and we are his, uh, his feet because we'll, we'll go where he's telling us to go. And so we're going to do what God is telling us to do. It said, God ordered the steps of your people right now in Jesus name. For those who believe in Jesus, God is with us every moment of the day. In John 14 and 16 and 17, it says, Jesus 
said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. So he said forever. He ain't leaving us forever. That ever forever, even to the end of time, even when we uh, breathe our last breath and our hearts start breathing and we leave this earth, we own, now we are in heaven and God, guess what? God is still with us. He's not leaving us. He said the advocate is the Holy Spirit. This advocate like Jesus will be, will be God, the Holy Spirit. He is our constant companion. He will never leave us. And a lot of times we may get into incidents and, you know, you know, sometimes we um, get, you know, mm -hmm. we not have control of our anger sometimes. And we'll say, oh, well, I'm going to lay my, lay my religion down for a minute and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and do that. But, you know, we don't we don't need to be doing that, you know, because we don't know what death is. And, you know, we don't need to be always, always staying in right standing with God. And not only that, you know, even we, we, we have having to fall, even do that. You know, God's still with us. He loves us just that much, much that we can go to God on our own and we can ask God to forgive us. And guess what he does, you know, and because a lot of times I'll be doing some things. It is, it's kind of, it doesn't even make sense sometimes. And I say, Oh God, forgive me for that. And I can hear him clearly say, I forgive you daughter. So, you know, you know, he'll let you know that he forgive you. So you forgive yourself and you just keep going and keep moving on in God because, you know, he loves us as much to not leave us in mess, you know, in mess. God is not about mess. The enemy is about mess and confusion. God is about um, life and life more abundantly. So, and, you know, whenever you uh, ask God to forgive you, he forgive you, pick yourself up, forgive yourself and continue to move on in God because God has a work for you. God wants to use you. He said, he is, uh, he is God with us. Our advocate will help us. He walks with us and help us, help lead us, holy, ho help us to lead holy and godly lifestyles. So we should be, be uh, practicing sin on a regular basis. We should be habitually sinning. If we, we're having a problem with it, that area, we need to ask God to help us. Open your mouth and ask God to help you. Um, and even sometimes you may have to fast and fast into it, you know, maybe fast two or three days with it and ask and pray about that thing, you know, and go in the, in the Bible and get you scriptures on that subject and start praying that thing and say, Lord, I need your help with this matter that I'm going through right now, uh, because I can't do it without you, without you. And he'll, he'll, he will help you because we have the Holy ghost living in with us. And then when that situation may come up again, the Holy ghost will tell you, say, hush. You know, you may want to say something, but the Holy Ghost will tell you hush. And your best bet is to hush because, you know, we don't we don't need to be saying any old thing because we don't need to hurt our witness because we know we the people in this world is looking at us, you know, and they a lot of times they may don't come to church and they, they may don't read a Bible, but they looking at you to see if you lining up with God's word, you know. They may know a little scripture. They may know what they done heard. So they're going to look at your life and see if it's lining up with God's word. And if your life is lining up with God's word, then they're going to want what you, what you got. You know what I'm saying? They're going to want what you got. They're going to want that, that, uh, that peace that passes all understanding. They want, they're going to want that unconditional love. They're going to, they're going to want that joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. They gonna want all of that. They gonna, you know, they gonna want that what you got because it has changed you. Because most people that known you up when I was, you know, no people that known me when I was growing up and know the things that I did, you know, and saying now they see me now and I'm talking, you know, because I didn't talk back then, you know, and I'm talking and I'm talking a whole lot. They know God has done something in my life, not only my life but other people's lives as well. It said He teaches us the things of God and empowers us to served for service to the kingdom it may it means that we are never alone he said we are never alone he, he's there with us we are never alone god is with us don't ever feel like you're alone i don't care what the lies of the enemy are saying you are never alone i don't care if somebody walked off and left you yesterday you still are never alone we have a god that we can go to we can pray to you know and uh, mm -hmm. god would would help us through all situations that we that we may ever go through. I don't care what situation it is. God is there to help us through it. It said, don't doubt that God is with you because God, don't doubt that God is with you. I don't care what, do not doubt it. He is with you. He hears your prayers. If you are blood, a blood washed believer, Holy Ghost filled, he hears your prayers. And he hears, the, he only hears, the sinners, uh, a sinner prayer when they praying the prayer of repentance. That's when he hears their prayer because he knows they're sincere about what they're asking him 
to do to come into their lives. So we don't have anything to worry about, you know. Um, just believe that God loves you. He cares for you. He wants the best for you. He will do anything he can to help you. All you got to do is ask for the help. A lot of times we don't we don't have things because we don't ask. The word of God said we, uh, uh, we, need, we need to ask. Uh, and, and, uh, and when we ask, don't ask like with the wrong motives because God knows our heart. He knows exactly what we mean, what we mean or not. Or he knows if we're just asking for something. Um, out of out of the wrong motives of of something he knows so it's so very important that when we ask God for things we're asking with the right motives because God is not going to give us things or uh, he's not going to give us if you're single and you see someone's husband he's not going to give you someone else's husband or somebody else's wives he don't do that God don't play that don't play with God like that because he don't do that but you know if you're single and uh, God is working in you, and then you want a husband, God to give you a man of God, because you are a woman of God, because we have to be very careful uh, that when we are uh, dating or in these relationships, that if we are a woman of God, we need to be, we need to be waiting on a man of God, God is going to send us his man, his man of God, someone that loves God with all his heart, mind, and soul, and when he loves God with all his heart, mind, and soul, he'll know how to love you, and you know, only only with that, and you when when God is that third chord in your marriage, oh, you can have a powerful marriage because you can work anything out. You know, you you can um, you know, y'all can pray together, or y'all can pray, y'all can go separately and pray to God, you pray to God, you know. And um, but it's so very important that you know that God is with us, God love us, his name is Emmanuel. That's before he was even born. In Matthew 1 and 23, that his name shall be Emmanuel, which is being interpreted as God is with us. Uh, I pray someone has gotten some out of this lesson because it's truly a blessing to me. And it reminds me that God is with me no matter what he's with me. And anything that I need, I need to go to God with that. And he will supply my every need, such as his riches in glory by Christ Jesus I pray that everyone that comes on this replay will get something out of this word that would permeate in their heart and remove all those uh, hardened places in their heart and they will have a heart of flesh. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.